Hello once again. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 810, 810 that is. And the topic today is going to be all about breaking up and the breakup experience in relationships. And I had to lead off because I couldn't get the song out of my head, which is a newer Sadaka song. Yeah, I'm dating myself. Called break, which is breaking up is hard to do. So I did it as that as the intro, 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 introduction. However, there's more to it than that, and there's some ways around it. Excuse me, ways through it that I recommend you may want to consider if you haven't already done this yourself. So I'll get to that in the details in a moment. Before I do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. In case you haven't seen my name around the broadcast somewhere, I am an inspirational speaker and relationship and love expert, and I'm a best-selling author of the book Fifty Ways to Love You. Fifty Ways to Love You Love. Actually, I'm the author of the best-selling book Fifty Ways to Love You Love. Let's get it backwards. A book for singles and couples, men and women, about love and relationships. Um, I'm also I also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what informs my work and what started these talks over two and a half years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Yes, there was a number one broadcast back in 2016. So now we're at episode number uh, 810. So I've done a lot of talks about love and relationships, as you may have figured out by that number. And I haven't talked much about the breaking up experience. I thought I would now because I was watching a friend's broadcast earlier today when she was talking about that. And I also know somebody I met yesterday who's going through a divorce right now. So my talks tend to be picking up on what's going around <laughs> in terms of on my in my field so that's what I'm talking about today and I can definitely speak from my own experience having been through a few of those over the years no divorces because I haven't been married yeah I know I haven't been married we'll talk about that another time maybe um, however I have had more than enough, more than enough breakups to learn the lessons of the pain of it and the joy of it because I've usually been on the receiving end versus the giving end, if that makes any sense. And I'll explain more about that in a second. So let's jump in, shall we? If you're single right now, this could be a reflection on your past breakup or past several breakups. If you're in the middle of a breakup, I'm my condolences and this may help you. If you're not in the near a breakup, if you're in a happy relationship, then please share this with your friends who are going through breakups who are already broken up because this may not be relevant to you. Probably not. We'll see. Let's just, I don't... <laughs> in case you haven't seen my broadcast before they're never scripted so I don't have a plan of action or an intention or a, or a bullet point list to go through it's going to be what comes through usually it's effective sometimes it's even helpful <laughs> so, so jumping in so again this is for those people who have either been through breakup breakups or in the process of breakup and usually single at this point the biggest challenge with breaking up as far as I'm well one of the biggest <laughs> I'm watching it stack up already one of the the critical, one of the most challenging parts of being in a breakup is that you're losing that person in your life in that context, and it's disorienting, disorienting for people. I say disorientating, no, disorienting. That's the right word for people. So it can knock you off your feet, knock you off your bearings because you're not sure what's going on. This this is let me back up. This is if you're being broken up with. If you're breaking up with somebody else, this will be lessened because you've chosen out versus being chosen away from. So having the experience of being disconnected and basically knocked off balance can be very disorienting, as I mentioned, and it can be emotionally disturbing, like, obviously. The challenge when we go through breakups is that for some of us, not everybody, but for some of us, and I've done this myself, we do a lot of, um, I will not call it self-reflection as much as I was uh, talking about self-recrimination. Like, if only it does me differently. If only I hadn't said what I said. If only I had said what I shouldn't have said, or whatever it was. That we'll, we'll find a way to think about how we could have second-guessed ourselves to get back that relationship that we've already lost. That is a futile effort because if the relationship is over, and I'm saying if because sometimes it's a it's a hiatus because things that happen because every relationship is different. But if you're in a place where a relationship is over, it's really no point trying to figure out what went wrong in terms of what you could have done differently with one caveat if you look back at your past relationships and we talked about this part before if you look back at this past breakup and you go back and look at previous breakups over several relationships and they look similar or there's some con uh, some commonality about how it happened it's worth investigating deeper because when you start to look at that you'll see there's some common threads and you can do something about that I'll get to that in a minute the other part about when you are broken up with the recipient of a breakup, so to speak, being dumped, as it were, 
is it can be a very painful experience of I'm not worthy, I'm, I'm hurt, they screwed me over, it's all their fault. A lot of judgments going both directions, both out and in, where you're going to be judging and blaming the other person for breaking up with you, perhaps. And you may perhaps be judging and blaming yourself for what happened. And also feeling heartbroken on top of that. And the emotional baggage just piles up because you're feeling so hurt. Either way, as I said with the early one, it isn't effective. This is the thing about breaking up. Breakups are not fun. I know. I've been through plenty myself. Enough. Myself. And the reality is that we move on with our lives and have other things happen. I'm not saying you should be like an automaton, or automaton, excuse me, or get the right emphasis, automaton, that was the word, and not have feelings. But what I am saying is that if you're going to spend years moping around in grief and upset and hurt feelings, that may be not effective. So my encouragement as I'm, I'm just letting this come through as it comes through is if you go once when, when you go through because we, we tend to go through a breakup upset discord separation relationship it's wise to actually seek out someone to get counsel from whether it is a helpline or a or a family member or somebody just to cry on their shoulder because it's important to vent the emotional upset that's inside because a breakup isn't pretty it's not fun usually again if you're the if you're the breaky if you're the one that's been broken up with it's usually not fun and I I okay. I'm <laughs> I, I got to say something, and I stop, and then part of me goes, "No, you got to talk about it." Um, just to be transparent, in some of my past breakups, I was the I was the one that got broken up with, but I instigated the breakup. If that makes sense, I was the one that wanted to. Um, I wanted the one to be exonerated, like I was the good person, even though I caused the breakup by having the other person leave. So I actually pushed the other person away. They broke up with me, but I made it happen. I'm not proud of that, but that's kind of one of these these challenges that we all have interesting patterns and mine aren't pretty, and let's be clear about that, in breakups when we go through relationship challenges. Because frankly, we don't have skills in this area. I mean, you know, we don't, same as we don't have skills about being in a relationship, usually, when we're first time dating, we learn by practice and doing and experiencing. Same thing's true in breakup too. The first time you get broken up with, if you remember that far back, <laughs> I think, yeah, I can. Um, there's a distinct sense of, of being like gutted, like being stabbed through the gut and being so emotionally distressed, thinking life is over. Breakups happened since then, weren't quite as painful. So we learn, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself, but I think you may have the same experience that if you've had a few breakups over your life, the earlier ones were maybe much more painful than the later ones. As an indication, by the way, that you've also learned perhaps how to be more self-sufficient, which I think I'll get to in about that in a moment too. If I remember what I was talking about before. Okay, keep going. So this explanation of understanding about breaking up, it's about what you do with it when it happens. Because again, as I mentioned, the self-flagellation that we might do when we go through a breakup, self-abuse, self-obsessed, um, wounding almost that we give ourselves when we go through a breakup first of all is unnecessary secondly we're not we're definitely a martyr to this we don't need to be a victim of this if something happens it doesn't work out your person leaves yes you may have made a mistake then again you may have not made a mistake maybe they did so i'm not going to give you like the right procedure for every single thing i'm trying to get to the point about what you do once you've had a breakup because how you got there is unique every time well unique to you perhaps every time you may have the same experience more than one time which I mentioned earlier I'll get to that in a second too that's the other one thank you but when you go through a breakup how you focus your energy your time afterwards is very important because I did it in fact I did it, it was yesterday's talk day before Sunday no yes I talked yesterday or the day before which day it was about how Time doesn't heal all wounds when it comes to relation. When it comes to emotions, time numbs all wounds. And this is the thing: after a breakup, in fact, I reckon you watched that broadcast. It was a kind of a key one about the, the how you deal with your emotions. So I'll put the link in the. I'll find it. Put the link in the comments. But when you go through a breakup, it's at that time the most um, vital place to spend time being gentle with yourself. First of all, before anything else. Be kind with yourself, be compassionate, because you may feel um, torn apart emotionally 
And if you spend some time being gentle with yourself, rather than being the judgment, self-flagellation, resentment, guilt issue that I talked about earlier, you have a better chance of healing. Secondly, focus on the love that you have. Because sometimes we think when the breakup happens, they took the love away. There's no more love around, it's gone, they've walked away from it. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting some pots off my screen, that was weird. Um, so there's this distinct, what am I getting this? Sorry, I'm getting a message back on the screen, which is confusing me. Okay, I keep going. We'll see what happens. All right. Oh, this is getting silly. <laughs> I'm getting this message back on the screen currently, and I thought I was clearing my message. All right, fine. So, I'm going to continue on with this talk. Hopefully, you're getting it. It's not cut off or anything like that. <sighs> Distraction's not easy. So first of all, being gentle with yourself, absolutely. The second thing is being loving with yourself because, here we go, when you go through a breakup, at some, it's oftentimes feeling like the love that we had was taken away by our partner. And by removing the love, you feel suddenly love lorn, love lost, love void, which isn't true, but it feels that way. So when you put some energy into focusing on loving yourself at that moment, it's almost like filling up your tanks again, like you've been drained by somebody else but you have the energy, the skill, and the ability to fill up your own tanks again, your own love tanks, so to speak, your your um, batteries of love, so to speak. Right, let's, let's, let's be let's be um, eco friendly. Let's put love batteries, not love tanks. <laughs> but that is a focus. So being gentle with yourself, loving your, with yourself, are practices you can use, especially when it's close to the breakup, so you can feel more self sufficient. Because after a breakup, it can be you feel horrendous. It can feel devastating because it is a grief journey. And being, hey Katie, nice to see you my broadcast, thank you for being here. Um, and that, that, that pain and wound after the breakup can sometimes seem to last forever. But again, as I mentioned earlier, as we go through, as we tend to go through breakups, because we usually have more than one over the period of our life, and I've had more than, more than a few, it gets a little bit easier. But again, as I said in, the, I said it in my other broadcast about letting time heal, it doesn't, it, it numbs. The wounds get numbed by time, not healed. As I said then, physical wounds like, you know, broken bones or scuts and wounds. Yeah, actually, yes. And thank you. I, I did mention that one. Yes, you can break up amicably. You're in the thick of it now and feel amazing. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. And by the way, if you're wondering who I'm talking to, if you're watching this, I'm doing it. I'm in the middle of a Facebook Live, which I'm interacting with people on. If you're watching this on YouTube, that's why you can't see who I'm talking to. <laughs> so great stuff, Katie. So I'm glad to know that. So along the journey of breakups, and again, I was talking from the point of view of being the break E, the one being broken up with, being gentle with yourself, loving yourself, and actually when you're being a broken up, when you're having an amical breakup, applying the skill, applying the um, healing salve, uh, ointment, so to speak, of self-love and gentleness are key things to use as well because it's a time when we feel, feel most, most uh, fragile. Don't think it was just me that had that experience. I think we all did. Being broken up with can be a very fragile experience. We get feel like we've been shattered almost, and it's like picking up the pieces. And when it's a painful breakup, that's a lot of pieces to pick up. So focusing on yourself in your breakup, whether it is amicable or not, so thank you, Katie, for that piece, is vital because you're the one who is in charge of your feelings. Like, duh. But so many of us sometimes put our feelings in somebody else's hands, even when they broke up with us. And so we feel squashed and hurt and wounded because they don't care about us anymore. It's your time to care about yourself, which is an ongoing, by the way, an ongoing daily practice I recommend fully anyway, because it's not somebody else's job to care about you. It's a joy when they do, but it's your job to care about yourself. So the thing about breakups is they sometimes put life in stark contrast to what you've been experiencing. But you've been in a relationship that was just cruising along, and I did do a few of those in my past too. Everyone's going fine, and then suddenly it goes sideways. And so, Learning, I didn't know at the time, so I've learned in hindsight, and I look back in hindsight, learning how to love ourselves independently of the relationship. So, and it's not cheating on the relationship, by the way, but loving ourselves independent of the relationship allows us to be whole no matter what happens. This is part of what I talk about, about how, how the, um, the, dis, the disengagement of codependency is key to having healthy relationships. And self-love, even in relationships, is a vital component because it puts you in a place where the person's love they're giving you is a bonus, an additive to who you already are. It's not filling some sort of gap you think you have. So when you break up with somebody, or when someone has a breakup, 
carrying that self-love that you already have into your singlehood experience is totally workable too. I'm not saying you can be, it's going to be peace, peaceful and easy, there won't be tears, but it's about, as you said there, Katie, you've been feeling all the feels. Yes, that's another thing, by the way. Um, so, so, whoa, yes, you've been, you should be feeling all the feels, which is why you think you're feeling good. You're frustrated, sad, and angry at times, but allow yourself to heal, gain clarity, loving yourself, and foremost. Yes, yes, exactly. So this is the thing. This is part of the the, growth, the, the grief experience is to be real with it, not to stuff it. That thing I said about time healing all wounds, that talk, I'm going to put the link in the comments. I have to now. I've talked about it so many times. It's about the fact that going numb isn't the way to through. Feeling what's going on and being authentic and being honest with yourself is absolutely the best choice. Because... That's the fastest way to be healed. Because the emotions are inside and until you release them, as I mentioned in another talk about how the beach will get stuffed down, having the emotions stuffed down, pretending they don't happen, trying to ignore them, trying to be together and be okay, the emotions don't go away, they just get stuffed down. When they come out, the longer you hold them, it's going to be more painful. So the sooner you choose to face those challenges, pains and upset it, exactly, Katie, feel it to heal it. Well, actually, it's feeling it to release it so you don't need to heal it. So, well, that is healing. So yes. <laughs> And that focus point is so key because when we really spend the time loving ourselves, then the wounds do heal. And I mean the emotional ones. Again, physical wounds, emotional wounds are different in terms of time, as we talked about before. So my invitation to you, if you have been through a breakup, is, as Katie put it perfectly, be authentic and heal by feeling what's going on so you know what yourself and you learn, your, learn you come back to yourself the way it's healthy. Because not, not all breakups are amicable. So even if it's amicable or not, being willing to face your pain, face your feelings, own them, respect them, love them, is the way to become whole again. Even though we never weren't whole, but we might feel less than whole after a breakup. At least I know I did when I was younger. There's another piece in there. Codependency piece, those feelings. There was one other piece that would come back to me. Ah, oh, yes. This is an additive piece. For those of you who are serial daters, um, thank you. I'm glad we're on the same page, Kitty. This is great. So I appreciate the love and, and the agreement. Um, if you're a serial data, meaning that as soon as you get out of a relationship, you get into the next one. If you do that all the time, like you've never, it's almost like you've never spent any time between relationships, being single for more than a week or two weeks. Don't rush so fast. I have people, I, I know some people, a couple of people at least, who basically got based into relationship as soon as they came out of their home like they went from parents to relationship matches from parents to marriage to divorce to relationship to another relationship without anything in between i don't believe they know who they really are on their own and that is one of the things that i recommend you spend some time if you are post breakup not saying you should spend your life being single better than well spending being single being in a bad relationship that's a quantitative thing but being focused on taking care of yourself and learning how to be more self-supportive makes you a better partner for the next relationship if you take the time to focus on that. The codependency thing I talked about earlier, that's a thing a lot of people do where they actually will, they can't function outside of a relationship. They don't know how to be single. That's an indicator that maybe there's some growing to do. It's like my focus on my work seems to be more and more helping people who are either suddenly single who are single learn how to stand fully in their truth, their hearts, their love and their joy from a self-loving place because that's where it goes. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Putting putting whipped cream on shit is still shit. Yes, and I'm using the yes word. I have to clean out the shit before engaging with another partner. Exactly. Thank you, Katie, for putting it so succinctly. That was perfect. <laughs> Get away with words. That was great. So that's the thing: is that spending time being with yourself to love yourself and take care of yourself. And if you've got issues in past relationships, that's the time to get some help, like with me. But the thing I want to say is that it starts with you. Self-loving, self-support, as I've been pedantic and repeated about for months now, is the key to having healthy relationships. I was talking to a friend of mine today who was coaching me on some stuff, and she said that one of my strengths is helping people find their way back to themselves, to stand in their autonomy and their, and their authenticity, to be, be in their wholeness as they are, because that's really where everything starts from. And that's what I've been working on for a long time, which is one reason I have been single. I, did, I was going to come back to that. I mean, I've been single for a while because... My focus on my work, my truth, and my calling is more important. Not more important. It's important to me to do that first because I know myself when I'm in a relationship, that might fall away if I don't focus on it and build it strong first. I build the foundations of my work first, 
then we have a relationship on top of that that works easily. That's kind of, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Just in case you're wondering why I'm single. <laughs> um, and also why I'm looking for a relationship, if I have one, with somebody who can compliment what I'm doing, because that's what goes together. Thank you, Katie. Yes, you've given so much clarity and support. Grateful for you. My pleasure, my honor, my service, my, my willingness, and my gift. So thank you for being here. I appreciate the love. So to wrap this up, because I'm going a bit longer than I planned, um, focusing on yourself when you are post-breakup is the key, as I mentioned. But do it from a place of wholeness, from a place of compassion, from gentleness, from love, from, from healing. Thank you, Katie. Yes, yes, because I am a strong man and that's my mission and purpose in life. To, to li well, in life, for life, as life. <laughs> Thank you for that. And yeah, we'll catch up at some point, I know. Um, so having said all that, I will put some links in the comments as reminders. Do, I think I, I should I finish. Yeah, I did finish. Okay. Went a bit longer than I planned. So as support for you, I will put a couple of things in the comments, which is um, my self-love practice will go in the comments because frankly, it's the cornerstone. That's why I keep talking about it. I've done it for over a year now. This is where things start with practicing self-love, learning how to stand your own two feet so you can be healthy before you get into the next relationship because that next relationship is going to be another crutch if you don't do the work first. So my passion is supporting you remembering that because that's where the truth starts. So the self-love practice will be in the comments. Um, I'll put coming home to yourself in there too. It's about time I put that out again. I've got a group course that I'm launching. It's a beta test. It's a pay what you want. Yes, it's all about that. Um, it's called Coming Home to Yourself. It's it's seven right now, 17 different self-support practices that will help you get where you want to go. And also put the discovery session link in there. Discovery session link in there as well so you can reach out and talk to me. And my book, as I mentioned at the beginning. So there'll be four links in the comments as I tend to do pretty much every day now because people ask for them. And on that note, a reminder where you can find me because in case you've been wondering who I'm talking to like with Katie back and forward here, this is a Facebook Live that's on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Facebook page on Facebook, yeah. Facebook.com forward slash Barry Silver is my personal page where you find me live 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week, uh, right here. The replays, in case you want to see my previous broadcasts, and I will put the other link in the comments for the other broadcast, by the way, is uh, my personal business page on Facebook, which is Barry Author, and also on my YouTube channel because for some people, YouTube is easier. So you may be watching this on YouTube, in which case you found it. But my YouTube channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Personally, I think it's easy to sort through the titles there because they're put together more closely than they are on Facebook. So if that's where you want to look, I recommend that watch them there. If you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below. You can send messages to me over social media. And again, there'll be links in the comments for you to get support, get help, get some next steps. I thank you for watching as always. And uh, I appreciate being with me. Thank you, Katie, for all the love. I saw all those hearts popping up. Much appreciated. With that, I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.